Hey YouTubers and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel. And today we're going to be going into something pretty important, especially if you're in the mechanics field uh, or if you're just getting into it or even if you're a weekend warrior DIYer, uh, there's still things you can learn from this and we're going to be going over some things at the end of the video that you might find uh, enjoyable, you might be interested in. So stay tuned for that. But this is the beginning of this video is going to be really important for those getting into the professional field or trying to improve upon them themselves. And that is going to be three things that will help you to become a better or faster technician. In order to be more proficient and become a faster technician, it, this number one reason is going to be solely dependent on you, your determination, and how much you really want to become that better technician or step up to that next level, uh, improve yourself. Even if it's not to your peers or anybody around you, just yourself, focus on yourself, but keep in mind that your peers are going to be a big factor in this. And that is going to be knowledge on how to do the jobs. Now granted, when you get into it, you're gonna have basic jobs that you're gonna learn from make and model. You know, everything's a little bit different, but the generic basic jobs are fairly easy and basically the same. But as you progress, you're going to get jobs that you might not have done or jobs that you just don't feel like you're real proficient at and sometimes you don't make it in that time frame and you're kind of losing pay uh, with the time that you're spending on the job so it's going to be dependent on you to, to grow your knowledge on those jobs and there's really only a couple ways to do that for one learning from your peers that's a big thing so I'm not saying you got to make friends with everybody but you know <laughs> try not to make enemies, but at the same time, try to find those that are willing to help you and really listen to them. The, the ones that have done those jobs, they know the tips and tricks. That's one thing that's really going to help you is to learn the tips and tricks on how to do these jobs. Besides learning from your peers, the only real thing that's going to help you with the knowledge on how to do the job is time and repetition. Uh, learning those tips and tricks, from your peers, but also doing those jobs, make sure you study it. Um, don't just start plugging away and realize that you wasted an hour because you got to do something else first and then you, you're working backwards. Make sure you learn tips and tricks from your peers, but then learn as you're doing the job as well. And each time you do that job, remember the things that you can improve upon. Remember those tips and tricks. That's all going to come with time and repetition of doing the job. So there's no real quick cheat to, you know, just being proficient at every single job. Uh, it's just not going to happen. You can study a lot. That's going to help. Uh, make sure you look into the information. They always have steps for you on how to do those more difficult jobs. It'll save you time. And even with those steps, doing the job, you're going to learn your own tips and tricks, not just by following the steps that they give you, but you're going to learn tips and tricks on how to access certain fasteners and uh, maybe something that you can remove first in order to make uh, getting access to a certain area easier. So that number one is solely upon you and how much dedication you have to progress. Number two is going to kind of run right alongside number one because it's also going to take repetition and knowing the job. And that is going to be having the best tools possible for the job. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about quality wise. I'm not saying you got to have the best possible quality tools for every single job. That is a good portion of it. That is a, a good factor of it. But what I'm talking about is having those specialty tools or even just generic tools that you might not have that would make the job a lot easier. So just a couple very generic examples. Instead of using, you know, to get to a fastener way down, maybe to the bell housing or, you know, real deep down in the engine bay, instead of using six small extensions and four wobbly joints, you could go out Get yourself just a couple longer extensions. Use one extension and a universal socket. Now that's very generic, but it is a good point. It's things like that that's going to save you time and save you a lot of headache. Less parts connected, less things to come apart, less things to lose. 
uh, faster to grab. And then just another very generic example, you may be doing a job, even if you're a weekend warrior, a DIYer, you may be doing a job, you're just over there plugging away, getting at it, everything's going smooth, uh, you're just, you got your ratchet, you're just going to town, the, the job's going great. Something as simple as an impact driver, just a small impact driver, not only is going to save you time, but also effort. It is going to, it's gonna save you time and effort tenfold. Uh, so something just as simple as that. Obviously, as a mechanic, you should probably have those tools, um, but those are just generic examples. Also, keep in mind specialty tools for those jobs. It's going to make a lot of jobs easier, especially if you do a certain job that requires a specialty tool very often and you rely on the shop's specialty tools. If it's checked out to another technician, then you're standing around waiting for it. You don't have time to be waiting for that. You need to get the job done as fast as possible and easy as possible. So sometimes if you know you're gonna be doing a job a lot, you need to go ahead, spend a little bit of money, get that specialty tool so you never have to wait. You can just start plugging away at your job. So number one is knowledge on how to do the job. Number two being reducing the jerry rigging that you have to do with tools and get yourself some good quality tools that are going to make the job a lot easier, whether that be generic tools uh, that are better for that situation or specialty tools. And number three is going to be a big one for me. Obviously, all of them are big things, but number three is organization. So organization is a big thing to me. Uh, I'm a very organized person. I can't stand clutter. Um, obviously, if you're a subscriber of mine, you already know that. Organization is going to make you not a necessarily a better technician. In a sense, it will. Your quality of work isn't really going to increase, but maybe your quantity of work, because when you're organized, you can find things faster, you're more proficient, and you can get the job done a lot faster, and you can keep rolling on the jobs. Also keep in mind, organization is not for everyone. I understand that. Not everybody can be organized. Some people are just naturally unorganized and they're okay with that, which is perfectly fine. I understand it. It blows my mind sometimes, but I understand it. Some people, you know, that you could open up a drawer. I don't know what in the world is going on in this drawer, but they could take their 10 millimeter wrench and throw it at a 15 degree angle at 6.3 miles per hour. It's gonna bounce off that side of the drawer. It's gonna go over here and land underneath their 15 millimeter impact socket. And two weeks from now, they're gonna know exactly where it's at. And then there's also gonna be those people that do that exact same thing, but have no idea where it is two minutes from the time that they put it there. Uh, shoot, I could do that organized and it could be in my hand or right in front of me, but staying organized is going to a majority of the time increase your performance as far as uh, time-wise. So those are my three things and we're going to get into some of the organizers that I have. So organization is very easy, but it can go two completely different ways. You could either go very expensive or very high quality and it can be pretty dang expensive, especially if you have a lot of tools, or you could go cheaper and try and you know do some organizing here and there but i stay away from that i like to fall just like any other time i like to go right in the middle where i get a good quality organizer for a great price and there's a lot of them available today so keep that in mind so i'm going to be showing you guys some good quality organizers for a price that's not going to break the bank now i do have some toolbox widgets in here i love the toolbox widget organizer but it's not going to be for everybody if you're on a budget or if you have a lot of tools because the prices are higher. If you don't have that many tools, it's a great organizer and I suggest it. Or if you have a lot of tools and you have a lot of money, it's a great organizer. But it is one of the most expensive organizers out there, uh, but they're a great organizer. So keep in mind, I do have toolbox widget organizers in here and I love them, but once again, they're on the higher end of organizer prices. But I'm going to get to showing you the rest of my organizers and I really hope you guys found the rest of the information that I shared with you guys informative. If there's anything else that I may have forgot that you think might help new technicians or those trying to improve upon themselves because this is an ever-growing industry, things are constantly changing, so you're never going to stop learning. So stay dedicated and keep learning and you're going to become a more proficient and more professional technician every day. So let's get into these organizers and I really hope you guys enjoy.
So I'm just gonna do this by hand. I'm not gonna set you up on the tripod because I'm just gonna run through this real quickly. Some of the organizers that I use, uh, some of the tools I keep in their original cases as long as they don't take up too much space. Uh, sometimes if you don't have the space for them, unfortunately using those blow molded cases and stuff isn't the best. But if you have the space, some of them are very nice to have. So I do have some original casing that I like to keep and use. And then I have some aftermarket organizers that I wanna share with you guys. So in the top, I have a lot of gear wrench stuff. So as far as the screwdrivers, picks, and scrapers, I keep them all in the original blow molded cases. And they work very nicely. They fit in this drawer perfectly. And then some of my bits that I don't really use, I keep in their original casing. And then all the bits that I do use often, I keep in the Ernst Bit Boss. And this thing is fantastic. Also, uh, a lot of these tools as well as the organizers will be linked down in the description for you guys if you guys are interested. I'm not gonna go into every single detail on the organizers. I have plenty of other videos on that. But I have the wire organizer off of Amazon which is very affordable and works very well. And then I also have three of the Tekton pliers organizers. And I really enjoy those, especially when you buy them from their site and you get money back. I used all of my rewards money to purchase these. So it was really nice. Here, I just kind of use one of these, like, I don't know if you want to call this arts and crafts or whatever. It's just a little organizer for all of my miscellaneous wires and connectors and batteries and all of that. As far as my wrenches, that is going to all be the toolbox widget. So if you have a lot, it is going to get pretty dang expensive because the toolbox widget is not a cheap organizer, but they are a very nice organizer. Below that, I had a company called Trace My Space create these for me. You basically take a picture of your drawer with a quarter in each corner and you lay your tools in there exactly how you want and they can do it all by the photos that you send them and they can create these little organizers for you and then you can also have your name engraved on them or whatever you want property of as far as my extensions and these ratchets i use the original blow molded cases this is gear wrench snap on gear wrench and then these are some miscellaneous like auto zone stuff that i never use below that is another trace my space organizer Below that, that's, that's very organized, all right? Over here, I keep all of the gear wrench ratchets in their organizers. Now, granted, these do take up a lot of space instead of just kind of laying these all bunched up in a corner, but they're super easy to grab, and uh, I just like these organizers. These are astro-pneumatic, and I like the organizer for this as well. Then I have the Ares, I believe, Torin. A lot of different companies make this exact same organizer. I use it for the magnetic nut drivers, just some individual rails. And then here I use the Ernst socket boss in order to keep a majority of my sockets organized. And then in the back, as far as my half inch drive, since this drawer isn't quite deep enough for me to keep my half inch deep wells on the Ernst socket boss, if I put these on here, they're just a hair too tall for the drawer to shut. So this is actually the Harbor Freight Organizer, which has worked out very well for me. Downside is they have the labels already on them and it drives me nuts when I have empty spaces. So I purchased some individual sockets, even if I don't use them, I purchased them so it's not empty. Same thing down here, red for SAE to keep that all organized. It's also in a separate drawer. Here's some of my newer Nyko Impact Torx and Allen's. Haven't really used those yet, but we'll be putting those to the test here soon. Those take up space. Uh, it's probably a lot better to just keep these things on rails, but not necessary right now since I have the space. But when I run out of space, that's where they will be going. As far as this drawer, this is another trace my space. I got my pry bars, files, a couple of hammers, and my punches over here keep everything organized and then down here I just have everything in their blow mold cases that's about as organized as I can get that and then moving over here I have some of this stuff taken down off of here right now but this is the Ulsa tools clip organizer it's good for miscellaneous basically anything 
uh, extensions. I've kept uh, ratchets up here, some wrenches, just miscellaneous items and they're magnetic, so it's really nice. And then some more toolbox widgets, some more Ernst socket bosses, toolbox widgets. The thing I do like about the Ernst socket boss is you can also buy these attachments to hold extensions and ratchets. Same similar setup here. And then I have some more gear wrench items in there, blow molded cases. But just keeping things organized like this just makes me more proficient and it gives me less anxiety. <laughs> Bolt biters, my new Capri uh, rounded off fastener, stubby wrenches. I just did a review on those not too long ago. Great little wrench set. I keep all of my Torx and Allens from the gear wrench master set in here just because there's so many of them and it's organized very well. Another little organizer over here for miscellaneous items, battery cleaning and such. And then that, um, uh, that's not a good drawer, a good example for this video. Um, that's all my overflow of miscellaneous tools and accessories for the work that I do, a lot of wiring and stuff like that. So that's about as organized as that drawer gets. But those are the organizers that I use and really enjoy. They're for, a majority of them are very affordable, minus the toolbox widget being a little bit higher price range, but a great organizer. Other than that, I love the Ernst Socket Boss, Bit Boss, uh, and I like to try and use the tool organizers that the tools come in as long as they don't take up too much space. But other than that, I'll have a lot of these tools as well as a lot of the organizers that you saw in this video, plus some of them that I've used in the past or in my other box that I really enjoy. So it'll all be linked down below for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below. And as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. See you guys next time.